And welcome back people to some more Final Fantasy. As you can see we have a different outfit, finally. <laughs> I'm geared um, for level 80 but this is our, this is our cheap stuff. It's not that great, but hey, better than nothing, right? <laughs> and so yeah, finally I couldn't stand the, the clothing anymore. Anyway, let's keep going. We are basically a scene eater, or we are turning into one. Let's hope for the best. Oh, this might be the end of the greatest hero. <laughs> So let's see. Music. Okay. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I sold something. <laughs> Damn. Who's <laughs> Braggy? Yo man, how you doing? Where is she now? Um, yeah. What is the exit? Which one is it? Exit this way, down right, left. <laughs> Oh, come on, do I have to visit everybody now? Really? The cabinet. Okay. Um, cabinet. There you go. And I guess is that, yeah.
god. What is the exit? Atlas is where I never know this one. The Marilyn. Right, let's try that one. Yeah, okay. I think I nailed it. Improve my gear. I just noticed where is my where is my Midgar companion? What is it? No, 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 that one. Minion. Where is my Midgar? There you go. Huh, my little friend. Welcome back. <laughs> um yeah, I guess. Yeah, as alright as I could be, I guess. Each. Um, um, yeah, we'll be we heading. The Rookery. It is, yeah, it's there.
Is it up high? Yeah. Yeah? Missed it. <laughs> People of this city have spirit, I'll give them that. They've not lost the will to fight. I can imagine how torn you must feel, looking at that sky. Knowing what it means to everyone. And that you're responsible. Um... I, an all too familiar one. Here you stand alone, expecting no one else to bear the burden for you. corner and there doesn't seem to be any obvious way out but that doesn't mean it's over however hopeless it seems you haven't lost yet I remember looking up at the sky like this before. Being caught up in a strange kind of calm. Because you knew your destiny. we realized we were responsible for the flood. When we resolved to journey to the source by taking our own lives. One last sacrifice. One last fight. One last failure. And then the oracle appeared, and, well, you know the rest. There were times in the years and decades that followed when I wondered if we might not have been better off just letting the rejoining happen. That we'd made one last mistake. But seeing that giant Talos stir to life cured me of any doubts I still had. Always, always we took the burden of fighting upon ourselves. That's what heroes do, isn't it? And so we never had the chance to see anything like that. Our people coming together as one. To think that their hope still burned so bright. That they were still so eager to live, they would lift up their fellows, one on top of the other, till they reached the sky. No. We made the right decision. And I can finally feel proud of the part we played in helping this world survive. Well, come on then.
the hell? As I thought, what happened between us was no coincidence. My story may be finished, but the fates have gifted me a minor role in yours. I suspected as much the moment I realized you could hear me. But it's hard not to doubt yourself when you're the man who caused the flood. I was afraid to do anything more than watch for fear of making things even worse. But no longer. After all, the path I once walked is now yours to finish. For what it's worth, I cast my lot with yours. If you need a push, I'll be right there behind you. If you lose control, I'll do my best to stop you. So, let us be about it, hero. You were up here all alone, brooding and fretting and wallowing in your woes. But look at you, <laughs> grinning at nothing like a pollen drug pixie. Ah, queen. Hmm. Look at what you've done to your ether. It's a mess. And you have cracks running all through that pretty soul of yours. My poor little sapling. Whatever am I to do with you? Shall I yield up my throne? You could claim it. Cut ties with the mortal world. Hide away in the castle. It won't fix the problem. But would it really matter? If any pesky heroes come calling with steel and magic, all of Il Meg will rise up in your defense. My crown and scepter are yours, if you want them. What? Don't give me that look! Of course I knew before I asked that you'd never ever heed such a wicked suggestion! <laughs> and besides, what would become of my precious and ephemeral flower? Dear beloved sapling, you are lost, confused, and have precious little time to gather your wits. Your kind is always so preoccupied with what lies ahead, and so we muddle your vision with fog and glamour. But such trickery is easy to see through. Stand very, very still. Think not of where you need to go. But where you are right now at this moment, at this time, in this place. Our Cairn of Crystal. From shadowed hood he watched you go, his ruby eyes with warmth aglow. See yourself as he saw you, and that shall be the clearest clue. You stand in his garden, dear sapling. Ask his flowers what they know, and you will surely find an answer. But what will you do with it, I wonder? 
I'll be watching and waiting. Waiting and watching. Well, well, well. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I was basically dead. What is it? Oh. <laughs> so that is what? Bro. Where is this? <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm sure I'm going to find it. The cabinet of curiosity, okay. <laughs> Oh man, I don't remember. I don't remember any of that. Oh, just outside. This should be this one.
Perfect, that's what I need. Yeah, give me that key. Give me that key. Really? Really? I have unlocked the door to the umbilicus. You are free to enter. Once you have what you require, I'll see it sealed once more. Until then, I will remain without. That is few books. To collect my thoughts, I prithee. Thy true name is Grahatia, then. By thy claims, thou too art a native of the source, though from an age beyond our own, when the eighth umbral calamity hath visited devastation upon our star. Thou hast, by subtle means, reached across the boundaries of time and space to unsow the seeds of catastrophe, ere its creeping vines drag our champion unto an early grave. In essence, yes. A difficult story to swallow, I am sure. I doubt not the veracity of thy words, not the account of thy coming, nor that of the fated calamity. Yet my mind straineth still to apprehend the enormity of this tale. Wouldst thou favor me with a gradual unfolding of its chapters? Certainly. But where to begin? I should start with those great minds who survived the calamity. Sid Garland being perhaps the greatest. In hopes of staying the unending tides of war, he and his fellows pursued all manner of possible solutions. One of these was rooted in a theory which unified several fundamental principles discovered over the course of the Warrior of Light's adventures. 
It proposed a method by which one could enter the river of time, traverse the rift, and leap between worlds. Perfecting that idea, however, was a work which consumed their lifetimes. And thus was it left to future generations to decide whether theory would be put into practice. But all the while, the world continued to burn. Hope was a feeble outpost, beset on all sides by thievery and misery and murder. People cried out in despair, there is no hope, we are finished. Mankind is finished. Then others raised their voices in answer. Though we be beyond salvation, those who came before may yet be saved. We will forge a crossroads and pave the way for a different future. By the wisdom of our forebears, we will prevent this calamity from ever having come to pass. The fighting went on unabated, but some few took up Sid's research and labored to realize those impossible ideas. After two centuries of labor, their descendants finally succeeded in awakening the Crystal Tower, an integral part of the process, and in doing so, roused its caretaker, me. By this stage, scholars had largely established the phenomena underpinning the rejoining, and identified the first as the shard which precipitated the eighth umbral calamity. This grand structure was already capable of storing the energies required to attempt the translocation. All that remained was to augment some few of its functions based upon the theoretical models of Sid and his compeers. And by means of such technologies didst thou affect thine arrival in the first to an age before this star had joined with the source. Some while before, as it turned out, it is all but impossible to predict how time will flow between one world and the next, and we missed our mark by almost an entire century. But this only worked in our favor. The Sin Eaters could not be defeated without the blessing of light, and summoning the only woman who might stand a chance against them would require decades of preparation. An undertaking of scarce credible endurance. That thou hast kept thy plan from falling into disarray these many years bordereth on the miraculous. Yet howsoever history be rewritten, thy present self was shaped by events which followed the calamity. Should said catastrophe be averted, the very skein of thine existence will unravel. Surely thou hast foreseen this. I am aware of the consequences. Tis for that very reason Sid and his colleagues bequeathed their legacy as an offering, and not an edict. To give all of oneself for the happiness of others, and with no promise of reward. Tis a hard thing to ask. Harder still for those condemned to survive in a world which pitted brother against brother. Indeed, you are right to call the execution of this plan miraculous, though the force which held it together was nothing so inexplicable. It was her, the warrior of light, has been our unbroken thread. Where others would stumble and fall, she would rise above. Where others would break and run, she would carry on. The Warrior of Light's tale is one of unyielding bravery. To tell it was to feel courage. To hear it was to feel hope. It was a breath of inspiration in an age of suffocating shadow. 
In the histories of a fallen nation was our hero hailed as its greatest ally. In the time-worn pages of a noble's memoirs were her deeds joyously retold. For many, these stories were the flame which warmed them through the coldest of nights. And so it should come as little surprise that the plan found no shortage of volunteers, concerning as it did the Warrior of Light herself. It was their chance to add their own verse to the hero's saga. She was the lodestar that brought them all together to send their final message back through time and space to her. The light of your legacy was our torch in the darkness. Burn bright again and live. I am merely the bearer of that wish. Come to ensure it is safely delivered. Wherefore sharest thou this burden with me and no other? What wouldst thou have me say? That you will be my accomplice? <laughs> Lol. <laughs> it was you yourself who convinced me of your suitability when you spoke of how you learned of the Flood and of your part in arranging Linfilia's journey to the First. Your actions showed uncommon resolve. It was clear you were committed to the cause of saving this world. I knew I could trust you to choose the right path forward, even if that choice came with a heavy price. What price? When all is said and done, and the last of the Light Wardens lies slain, I will absorb their corrupted ether, and then I will die. Knowing what I know of your companions, not to mention your champion, they will try to stop me. But in saving one, they would save none. Therefore, I implore you to aid me in concealing my identity and ensuring this tale ends as it must. To this end, I would have you take what I have told you of the Calamity and make of it a portent, a prophetic vision you beheld in the swirling chaos of the Rift. Is this truly thy wish? At this point in time, the Warrior of Light and I have yet to meet in Eorzea, and I would not wish that meeting soured by events which happen here. I will see this tale to a happy end, my friend. There has been enough tragedy. now if you lose control again the light could claim you for good although it's probably only a matter of time before you succumb to the change in any case what do you mean to do Uh, hmm, yeah. So if we save the exarch, <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna hand down Emmett, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> Ich
be on our way. Deacian mentioned the Tempest, did he not? That's the stormy seas around Calusia to you. His lair must be down there somewhere, hidden beneath the waves. Good, good, good. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with some more. Peace.